Mozambique um, through its partner, the Diocese of uh, Nyasa, uh, since about 2010. Um, the basis of the work there um, started out primarily as HIV um, and behaviour change related to um, HIV, um, but it's since expanded to include um, child nutrition in particular and also uh, water and sanitation. Mozambique has had a hard past. It suffered through colonialism that really left a huge portion of the population without good access to education or good access to health care. Uh, many, many, many people haven't, don't have any access to information about HIV other than through the church. And so some of our work has been just to, to give basic, basic education on how HIV is spread. So we firmly believe that the real good community development happens by members of the community themselves. So instead of having staff who come in from the outside to help transform a community, we really want to work to empower the community itself to do that work. It's sustainable that way. Those are the people, the people who live there are the people who are trusted and known. So we work through what we call equipage de vida, or teams of life. And those teams are made of volunteers from the community. We then train up that group of local people in key health messages, and they transmit those messages through the community. They also do general sort of social action, social welfare work, like taking care of elderly people, helping repair houses, working in their gardens. Then we have a team of people who support and train those equipas, those teams. Those are paid staff members and we call them adeptos. Eu entrei na equipa porque estava a gostar muito dos trabalhos que eles estavam a fazer. Eu dormi até muito porque inicialmente eu fui um membro simples da equipa de vida na minha comunidade de Nanar. Então, nessa altura, aqui em Manima não tinha nenhum adepto. Então, eu estava a ser que eu estava a se gastar muito dinheiro sair do adepto dos, dos seus distritos para aqui em Manima. Então, quando existiu essa oportunidade de existir adepto aqui, e o meu barco me falou, eu fui me entregar mesmo com minha seriedade mesmo, para também ajudar as pessoas. In 2014, we realized that we really didn't have enough adeptus, staff members, to do a good job at supporting the teams. So we introduced a new group of people who serve as bridges between the adeptus and the teams, and they are animators. So for every three or four communities, those communities themselves have chosen animators, one woman and one man, who can do the follow-up work uh, when, the, when the adeptu leaves. The adeptu is constantly on the road, but can't be everywhere at once. And so the, the animator is able to stay and give ongoing teaching. We're working very actively in 64 communities, and we have another 36 who have teams that we haven't yet focused on in terms of intense teaching. So that makes 100. Beyond that, there are more on the waiting list who would also like to get trained. There is a thirst for knowledge, for knowledge in those communities. There is a real um, energy and a passion to want to learn more so that communities can be equipped in responding to the social issues that they're dealing with. Sometimes when you visit communities in um, developing countries, at some point the shopping list comes out where a community will ask for this and that and the other. With Mozambique, it was very different. There is this tremendous thirst for uh, knowledge and um, wanting to uh, learn more so that they're able to address the priorities that they themselves have identified in their own communities. In the past, if someone had HIV, we wouldn't go near them. We thought we would get HIV as well. But when we had it started with an equipe de vida, they explained that we can even eat from the same plate as them. We can take care of them. 
Even we can travel together. We can sit next to each other. But also, in addition to HIV, I've learned about nutrition. <laughs> we thought we had to, in order to make porridge for our children, we had to have sugar, and without sugar, we wouldn't feed them. But we've learned that there's many products that we grow here in our own area that we can use. To me, it's really the most exciting of all is to see communities who felt helpless realize that they actually do have control over many aspects of their own health.